In this video, I'd like to continue talking a little bit more as far as the interface of Unity is concerned, but also too, when designing a 2D game, one of the benefits of building something and utilizing an element called Create Empty. Now, as the name sounds, it is just that. You are creating an empty element that has nothing attached to it. However, that's the beauty of this element, is because it is a completely blank slate, we can attach components to it without it being seen. And in fact, right now, in the start of the game that I have here, as far as the bouncing ball is concerned, I have two empty elements named Game Over. And what they each have is a Box Collider 2D on them. But before we get too far into those, let's just actually make an empty object, just so you can see what one looks like. To make an empty object, you just right click, and it's actually the very first option, even above 2D. Create Empty is viable in both 2D and 3D game design and development. So there you can see it makes the game object for you. It is literally, that's it. You can't see anything. All you have is the position, rotation, and scale elements to it. And you can even see over in your inspector here. You've got the game object, but you can add components. And this is where the real power of these come in. Not only can you add components, you can attach scripts to them as well, and they can act as interactive elements here in the environment. To demonstrate to, to you, like if I start playing this game right now, so what I have is just a ball bouncing, and I'm gonna go ahead and kind of push it off to the side here and you see how it disappeared when it got too close to the edge. And actually, it's hard to see, but down in the bottom here, I get a note, and actually maybe in the console, here we go. I put a debug.log in to tell me the game ended. What had happened is it had hit a specific empty object that I called game over. So if I go ahead and jump back out of that there, you can see the two game over objects here. So what they're doing is each of these have a box collider assigned to them. That way then it can go and act as a collider and have whenever the ball hits them, it not only disappears, but it ends the game. So what I can actually do with this game object is I can go ahead here and I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna rename. And because of the scripts I'm using, I'm also gonna call this game over and then I'm going to add a component and we're going to add a box collider. Now notice what happens when you add in that collider. Now we actually see something happening with this empty object here. So now I can kind of pull it over. I can actually come in and I can scale it up if I want to. Make it a little bit thicker there and then reposition. So now if I select all three, you can see now that I have a setup here as far as blocked areas for the game there. Now, some other things I might do is I could add some tile maps to be attached to these elements. I could even go so far as making, if I right click and say create empty, and maybe I call this borders. And I select these three and that can help keep the hierarchy a little bit cleaner. So now I can kind of minimize and maximize that area there as far as the game goes. So let's go ahead and try our game again here. Let's see if I can get it to the other side. So we're going to kind of try to get it to bounce on the edge. There we go. Well, you can see that it still ended the game there. So even though I made this empty element here called borders, and these are now sub elements to borders, it's still being recognized by the scripts. Now, the question though, what is actually happening with the scripts here? So I have several scripts that if I come into the project here, I can talk about them briefly. One of which is the circle behavior. So if I go ahead and double click on that, here we can see the circle behavior starting out. Now, before I could do anything here, I had to make several variable values here below. So I have the state of the game, and then I have gameplay, which is a constant integer set to one as a measurement, and then game stop, 
set to two. So remember, whenever you're working with the C sharp scripts, whenever you're working in Unity, we need to set a state of the gameplay at the start here. And that's all we're doing here. So we are saying that we are going to play the game. Now, here is where it gets more interesting is because within specific to the circle behavior, we have a private function for on collision for a 2D element here. So if the ball collides with a game object with a name that is identical to game over, there's that string there, which if I tab back here, notice my three objects here. Each one is named game over. If I were to lowercase this O, because this is a string element, Unity is not going to recognize this. So if this occurs, for this specific public class, we're changing the state to game stop. Again, I'll make a comment here just to help. Tracking to make sure the collision functioned. And again, that's the beauty of comments is you can make notes to yourself. So again, I did the two forward slashes. Once I polished my game, I could actually comment out debug.log if I wanted to. And then as the game plays, remember that update, it's called once per frame here, that if the state is game stop for the class circle behavior that is attached to our circle, what I did here was we just tossed in as far as that specific game object that's attached to, in this case, the circle, I set it active to false, which that's why you're seeing whenever we play the game. Let me go ahead here. I'm going to just move this out of the way. You see how it disappears there. The bigger concern of this video was to introduce you, though, to the empty elements and their power within Unity. These are a great resource and can be utilized in numerous different ways in game design and development.